Now let's talk more about the Fed reaction to the markets with David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. David, good to see you here. Um, so it seems like markets pretty pleased with, well, not just the Fed, but also the CPI data this morning. What's your reaction? Well, I think it's more that the market was relieved that there wasn't bad news. I mean, it, it's good news, and, and the bond yields are really the greatest proof of that. But it's the um, traders and speculators that have to front run whether or not it goes the other way. And that's what the big spike at the morning open was about. And so you get 300 points just as a lot of these hedges and various positionings come off. And then now you kind of go back to normal. And what is normal? Uh, normal is the fact that the Fed's not going to raise rates again, that the Fed's going to cut once or twice this year, and that earnings are good in the market, and that the market is expensive. That's all the normal, and we know all that day by day. But some of these things just require a little bit of extra trading volatility around them. And David, you know, just the, the reactions and the responses are now coming in from uh, economists. I want to get your take. Ian Shepardson over at Pantheon, he, he says, listen, he's kind of calling the Fed's bluff. He says the Fed's going to have to backtrack from this new dot plot. He says, bottom line, he sees the labor market uh, softer over the summer. He thinks core PCE, it's going to come in better than Jay Powell expects. He's still looking for that first e easing in September. And then he's telling his clients, I think the Fed's going to have to play, kind of scramble to catch up here. What's your reaction to that, David? What do you think? Well, the Fed has already had to adjust its dot plot, but the other way a couple times this year. And I don't disagree with Ian that it could happen, but my expectation now is that they won't cut in September, but they will still take out 50 from the curve by the end of the year. And the reason for that is because they couldn't cut in July. I think they would have cut a second time in September, but not a first time because now it's just too close to the election and it's only 25 basis points. It's totally immaterial in the real world. And so why go do a quarter point right before the election and make them have to hear all the nonsense about it being political? They'd rather just wait and get their 50 basis points out of the curve in November and December. That's my expectation. So, David, of course, you're not the only person who said that the election is a factor in the Fed's decision-making process. Of course, we heard on the other side from Robert Kaplan, former Dallas Fed president, who said as much as they are able, they try to divorce themselves from those political discussions. It sounds like right. you don't buy it. No, I do. And I understand what you're saying. But that's kind of the point I'm making, is that because I think they want to be divorced from the political, that's an argument for why they will just wait. In other words, this could cut either way. Even they the appearance accused, of, they be of, accused of looking. Of cutting. Mm -hmm. They can be accused of cutting for political reasons, and they can be accused of not cutting for political reasons. My point is that once you get to four to five weeks before the election, and by the way, you know, absentee ballots and are already going to be being cast at that point, I don't think any of it would be substantively political. I agree with Kaplan about Powell and the Fed mentality there. I'm just referring to the optics that I think there's no upside in doing it when they can just wait. I think the FOMC meeting, by the way, in November is the week of the election. They can act 24 hours after the election and accomplish the same thing with their monetary policy aims. And Dave, one, one thing you said there, you know, that listen, they cut once in September by 25 bips and that, that wouldn't be material. It was sort of interesting, Dave, in the conference to listen because a, a reporter pressed Jay Powell on that. She kind of asked him, what, what, why would that matter? One, one cut in September. And I don't know if he gave it an exact answer, but he sort of seemed to suggest, well, you know, it's not the, it's not the one cut that matters. It would be that we've started on the path. It's the right path that, that would have an impact. What, what's your response to that? No, I agree. I thought it was a great question, and I think his answer is basically right. But what I would say is they put us on that path last November. And what I mean by that is even though they haven't been cutting, they told us they're done raising rates. They told us they're ready to cut. And that's how you got multiple expansion from 20 to 24. That's how you got the 10-year from five down to four. That's why credit spreads are 300 wide when they were in 2022, almost 600 wide. So they've basically kind of forecasted what they were going to do. And then the path actually begins with action. And, and look, we, th we started off the year believing it'd be March. 
Now we're talking about whether it's September or November. And don't get me wrong, if they end up cutting in September, then I'm just wrong. And it's not going to shock me. I'm more referring to the fact that I think September and November are interchangeable at this point in terms of policy outcome. So, David, between CPI and uh, the Fed presser just now, we got stocks climbing again. I mean, the Dow's down a little bit, but the S&P and Nasdaq are at record highs again. Is there anything between here and the year and the end of the year that creates a major speed bump for markets? That's a great question because the major things that an uh, asset allocator and portfolio manager like me is supposed to think about are not things that can be forecasted, so-called you know, unexpected events. Um, is there a possibility in the second half of the year of downward earnings revisions into 2025? There is the possibility. Is there a possibility of upward earnings revisions? Yes, but a couple percent at the most soaking wet. So I think that the risk is asymmetrical. Um, geopolitical issues are out there. Volatility around the, our own U.S. election is out there. But the biggest issue by far is one we know about, and that's the multiple of the market. That's the fact that NVIDIA is a third of the market this year, and it's trading at 75 times earnings, that the S&P is at 20 three times forward earnings right now. It's just an expensive market. That's the biggest thing we have to watch for the next several months. David, it was great to have you on the show. Thanks for making time to chat. Thanks for having me.